Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist that I'm building with the Godot engine. I'm joining you today on Saturday, February the 17th, certainly a little bit later than anticipated for my first devlog of the year, so I appreciate your patience. The good news is, while the cameras have not been rolling, I have been making a ton of progress on Dauphin, and I have a lot to get you caught up on. At the start of this year, I set myself a goal for Dauphin to take just a brief break from feature development and try to spend some time making the game look better. I certainly think it has a certain charm to it as I've continued to learn and improve my pixel art skills, but there are so many things I hope to improve about it to help it reach what I think is its potential. And one area where I've specifically started focusing on for now is the world, more specifically the islands that the player explores. Now this is what you're used to seeing when it comes to islands in Dauphin. Over the course of many years as I've been building out features for Dauphin, I've always had a goofy island like this for the player to run around on as I'm testing stuff. And it's okay at best, I think. For a game about a marine biologist, I think the water is very flat and very boring. All the textures here are something I threw together very quickly. Of course, we've got the same palm tree, copy and pasted in about 20 different places. And overall, this just does not look like an island. It looks like a bunch of squares. And that's really exactly what it is because I've been drawing this stuff by hand without even using tile sets that have auto tiling set up. This needed to change. So over the past few weeks, I've been working on this. And when I say this, I don't just mean this island, but rather a tool that can help me generate islands that look as cool as this right here in the Godot editor. I'm able to do this using a new class that I wrote called the Island Tile Map, which extends Tile Map and is a tool script, meaning I can run it from directly within the editor here. As you might have already figured out, what this script is responsible for doing is creating a simplex noise texture that I can then create a height map from and use that height map to map different tiles to the tile map, effectively procedurally generating these islands. This works so well in practice here in the editor. You can see I have my tile map selected in the tree and over here in the inspector, I have all the properties exposed that can help me manipulate what that noise texture is gonna look like that's used to build the height map. The easiest way for me to generate a new island is just to type in a random seed for my noise seed and then come up here and turn on my generate flag. This will get me beach balling for a few seconds as the engine builds out my new tile map. And after just a few seconds, we have a completely different island. You'll notice, of course, that with this new island, all those trees stayed in the same place, as well as the poor fisherman's hut that's now floating out here in the water. The reason that happened was because all of these organisms and this structure were hand placed by me for that last island, and that's something I want to call attention to. It's very important to me that I'm not randomly generating a bunch of soulless and repetitive and uninteresting islands for the player at runtime. Rather, my goal with this system is to enable me to create more interesting islands at development time, where I'm not required to actually draw the shape of the island. I can have the tool script do that for me, but then I can go in and add the content that I want by hand. I've been having a lot of fun and a lot of success generating very cool looking islands with this system. And because it's all driven by a height map, I can actually reap some more benefits. And that's most visible here with the new water, which I hope you'll agree it looks super cool and probably too good actually as the rest of the game needs to catch up to it. Because each of the tiles that the player can walk on has a small incremental change in height, rather than only showing the player in water up to their knees and then waist and then neck, we can incrementally lower the player into the water and have a precise visualization of the depth at which they're swimming at any point in time, which looks so much better than the swimming we had in place before. Now, if you're wondering how I made all of these really cool effects for this water, I didn't, and I can't take any of the credit here. All the credit goes to an amazing YouTube channel called Jess Codes, where she walks you through how she first created this effect for her Unity project, and then adapted it to Godot, and then she shared code samples in an MIT licensed GitHub repo, which I was able to learn from and adapt this hugely complicated shader to my project. So thanks Jess for this awesome content. I hope y'all go check out her channel and subscribe. That is all progress that I am super proud of over these past few weeks and could probably continue talking about for the rest of this video. But I do wanna move forward into what I'm working on this week as I continue to try to make Dauphin look better. What I'd like to work on next is also gonna be a lot of fun because it still deals with procedural generation, but this time related to my underwater scenes. Back when I first implemented Dauphin's diving system, I came up with a pretty good solution for building those underwater scenes. 
Rather than interacting with a tile map and a noise texture and placing tiles programmatically, I basically had big rectangular chunks of these underwater environments that I'd stitched together. I could make these environments deeper or shallower or narrower or wider based on how many chunks I put together. And then I could actually go into those chunks in the editor and drop in different organisms and decorations that would then end up in the final scene once everything was smushed into one. With what I've learned over the last few weeks, I'd like to revisit this system and leverage a tile map based approach to create a single unified scene rather than stitching together a bunch of instance scenes. I think I'll also be able to take into account the depth at which the player's diving on the island to build an underwater scene of that exact depth, giving me much more flexibility than before. I'll certainly go into more detail as we get into development, but as always, recording all this has taken way too long and it's time to walk the dog. We'll catch up for our first development session in the morning. Hey everyone, joining you for a quick update here on Tuesday morning. I still have a lot of work left to do on the procedural generation of my underwater scenes, but I did hit a nice little milestone this morning and figured I'd share. What we're looking at here is my new base dive site, which is very similar to the base island we were looking at before. Much like that island, this base dive site has a child tile map that's responsible for laying out the visuals of the scene. And in fact, this is quite a bit simpler than the island version because of the change in perspective. Because this is kind of a side-on view here for the player, rather than having to create bit masks for different terrains that we want to paint on the ground, we can pretty much just build this straight from top to bottom in a very simple way. If we jump into the tile map, hopefully that will be pretty clear. As we really move from top to bottom in this tile map, we can build the sky, build the water, and build the seafloor. And really all this comes down to is setting the cells in those particular rows of the tile map from left to right. This dive site tile map knows how to build itself out based on this new resource I've created called dive site data. And this is what I pass into the tile map before I actually tell it to build. Right now there's just a few very simple things in here. A biome that I've selected, a width which is currently fixed, and this is kind of how far left or right the player can go at that dive site. And then of course the depth which is coming from the height map from the island. So when you're actually swimming around on the island and you are diving in a deeper area, it's gonna result in a deeper dive site. Much like I've done with the island tile map, I decided to make this tile map a tool script so that it was much easier for me to build this out without having to actually launch the game to test my procedural generation code. So if I jump into the tile map, we can see I have dive site data already passed in here, and I can do something like update the depth and then regenerate this map and see how that's gonna result in a deeper dive site, which is just really handy for development. I'm happy with that progress so far, but as I'm sure you could tell, the dive sites right now are very empty and very boring. So the next step is going to be populating these sites with terrain and organisms, hopefully very similar to the ones you see on the island from which you dove. And that'll be something new that we pass across with the dive site data. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. As a quick aside, y'all may have noticed this thing appear in those most recent B-roll clips. And this is of course the Apple Vision Pro, which just released. If you don't already know, I am an iOS developer by trade who actually specializes in augmented reality development. So this thing is just totally in my lane. I recently got this and I've been having a lot of fun using it. I probably won't do a ton of B-roll with it because it just makes for some kind of goofy footage as you saw. But if you'd like to see more content around this and how I'm using it for game development, let me know, I'd be happy to make that.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Saturday morning. I have just had a very busy end to my work week, but a productive start to the weekend, and I'm super excited to show you some very cool progress that I've made. When we last spoke, I was headed down the path of figuring out how I could populate these procedural dive sites with interesting things for the player to encounter while they're diving. Unfortunately, I haven't made any progress actually adding anything to these dive site scenes, but I have been laying some pretty interesting foundation to help me do that. As I started thinking about my approach here, I realized that it would be an ideal experience for the player to be able to select where they want to dive based on what they can see from the surface. So to help address that, I've decided to try and render a bunch more detail underneath my newly transparent water. If we zoom in here, hopefully you'll be able to tell that this is meant to look like coral reef that is now rendered here below the water, surrounded by seagrass. And of course, my artistic ability is, as ever, the limiting factor with how this looks, but even with my first attempt here, I have to say I am very excited with how this looks. All of this looks even better in-game in my opinion, which is super encouraging, and hopefully you can see where I'm going next here. Because of the dynamically rendered shadow for the player, we can see how deep it is and exactly where they're swimming, and I can use that information to decide what to show the player should they choose to dive. So if the player is treading water over coral right here and wants to deploy the dive flag, I can render an underwater dive scene with coral and the organisms that would be living around that coral. Instead, if the player was looking for an organism that typically lives in seagrass, they could dive down over top of the seagrass here, and that would change what I put in that underwater dive site. Now that I'm rendering all this cool stuff underneath the surface of the water, I need a way to detect what's directly under the player when they choose to dive and pass that information into the dive site data resource that the dive site uses to build itself. That's what's coming up next. Hey everyone, joining you again on a rainy Tuesday afternoon after work, and I'm happy to say that over the past few days I've made quite a bit of progress and I think we're ready for the final update of the devlog. As you know from our last update, my goal was to begin populating these new underwater procedural scenes with actual life and organisms, and I really wanted to do that based on what the player could see from above while they were swimming in the water of the island. So now if we're swimming right above this seagrass here and we decide to dive with the dive flag, we will spawn into an underwater environment that has that same seagrass. And of course, my favorite part, when you are swimming over top of coral like this and you decide to dive down, you'll appear in an underwater scene with a bunch of coral heads. Now this right now is just the same sprite for this coral duplicated across the seafloor here. This will look a lot better as I spend more time on the artwork, but right now for just testing out this concept, I'm really pleased with the results so far. And while we're down here, I'll call out a few more things that I tried to kind of tune up from my previous implementation of these underwater scenes. Of course, we have all the same functionality as before. We have programmatically defined bounds for the scene based on the height and width of this dive site. We have the surface layer at the top, which will allow the player to recharge their oxygen and exit back to the same points on the island where they dove from. And then I tried to add some kind of polishy stuff here. So you'll notice that the player does have a shadow that's reflecting kind of where they are lined up over the seafloor here, and that shadow is going to get darker as they get closer to the bottom here. And when they're swimming on the bottom, they'll actually be swimming between all of these organisms that are spawning down here. Kind of just a nice little touch for immersion. Most of the code that accomplishes all this lives within my base dive site class. If we scroll down to the ready function for this class, you can see pretty much in order how I'm building out these underwater scenes. First, we set up the dive spot data, which comes from the island from which the player dives. We just make sure that the width is set and that we're at at least the minimum dive site depth, since really any depth could be provided to us from the island. And then we provide this data to the tile map. From there, we tell the tile map to build itself. We size the boundaries of this scene and also size the entity spawners, which are responsible for spawning in those organisms. We populate the organisms themselves, spawn the player, and set the camera's bounds to reflect the size of the newly built tile map. 
Injecting life into these scenes with my populate organisms function boils down to just swapping over the biome provided in the dive site data. So if we have a sand biome, we pretty much don't have to add anything. Or if we have a seagrass or coral biome, we just call the appropriate helper function here. These helper functions here are dead simple. They rely on instances of my custom entity spawner class, which is really just an area I can define in which I'd like certain entities to be spawned. And I use those to throw organisms straight into the scene. So for each instance of an entity spawner, I can add an entity, which you can see here is just a scene path. I tell it how many I want to spawn, a potential variance here. Then I just tell it to go ahead and spawn those entities right into the scene. This works great so far and is actually pretty flexible. In the future, I'll be able to add many different types of entities to those entity spawners based on things like the underwater biome, the depth at which we've dove, and potentially other factors to create a really nice underwater ecosystem any place the player chooses to dive. Now the final piece of this puzzle was understanding which biome I should be passing to the underwater tile map to build itself based on where the player has chosen to dive on the overworld island. To do this, I have gone back to my island tile map scene to provide a helper function. This is going to be all the way down here towards the bottom, I think, in a function called underwater biome at position. And the position we pass in here is the position of the player when they choose to dive. Once again, our height map that kind of defines everything about these islands comes to the rescue here because it's the single source of truth about where we're laying out all the different biomes that the player can see. So it has all the knowledge required to tell us where the coral is going to be laid out, where the seagrass is going to be laid out, and where any other biomes that I might choose to include in the future will be drawn on the tile map. So we can use that to understand what we need to pass to the underwater scene. Overall, I am super happy with where the architecture for this new island building and dive site building system has landed. It's a lot less code than I had before with my chunk based approach, but I can do so much more with it. Next steps here are gonna be super fun as well. It's time to introduce more plants, more invertebrates, and of course, fish to these underwater scenes. It's also time to bring back corruption that the player will be able to see on the coral reef below and will have to dive down to destroy. As always, I wanna give a huge shout out to the folks who support this channel and Dolphin's development on Patreon. My Garami supporters this month are Samuel SVD, Jess Sargo, Kyle Van Riper, and Mina Creative. My beta supporter this month is Giraffe Pain. This might sound cheesy, but I can't think of a recent devlog where I've made progress that feels as impactful to Dauphin and the game I want Dauphin to become as what I've managed over this past month. I'm feeling super motivated to keep up this momentum, so hopefully I'll see you soon for another devlog. Thanks for watching.